Hi, I'm Dr. David Paprota, Critical Concepts and Strategies, CCS Test Prep, and Retired Chief of Police. I've put this video together to give you some insight into the National Criminal Justice Officer Selection Inventory Version 2 exam. This is the two and a half hour exam. It's generally two and a half hours in length, and it consists of 200 questions in total. So anytime you're going to face an exam, even if you learn that it's the NCJOSI, make sure you check through the orientation guide, study guide, or testing agency, make sure you check, is it the two and a half hour version or the 90 minute version? The two and a half hour version is the version two. It's the latest creation by IOS, in Industrial Organizational Solutions, IO Solutions. It's their latest creation that is being used throughout the country. Now, what you need to know about the NCJ OSI version two, this two and a half hour exam, you need to know that the first 80 questions are cognitive questions. It's, for the most part, what you would expect going in to take a competitive law enforcement exam. There's reading comprehension, a degree of logical reasoning. You have to interpret information and determine, based on the reading of a passage, what's the most important aspect of it, or how would you capsulize that information in a statement. You have to look at faces and interpret which face most likely matches up with, for instance, if it's a wanted person or just a, a master image. You have to look at a map and work your way through a set of directions and determine the most direct route. You have to look at n letters, numbers, symbols in a series and see if you can quickly and accurately pick out the, of the A, B, C, D, possibly E answer choices, which one matches the master uh, series of letters, numbers, and symbols. So there are different aspects and different cognitive components within that first part, the first 80 questions. They're extremely important because it's a competitive test, meaning that you have to score higher than the other people competing to get the job, to be in the hiring process, to compete further for the job. So when you look at the cognitive component of any one of the tests you would take, here we're talking about the National Criminal Justice Officer Selection Inventory Version 2, the two and a half hour test, you need to excel in each one of the cognitive components. Some parts will seem extremely easy as if you couldn't get a question wrong, believe me you can, and then other components will seem like they're impossible to answer. For instance, the faces and determining the face or the profile that matches the face that you're given. You'll face as many as eight to nine question per type. You'll also face the shapes, you know, shapes where you have to, they call it flexibility of closure, where you have to be able to look at a a series of overlapping shapes in a rectangle and determine which one of the shapes is the same. Only one of the four given answer choices, four to five given answer choices, could be the same. Has to be the same proportion, same shape, it may be a different size, may be rotated slightly or totally, um, but you have to be able to pick that out as well. So with part one and the 80 cognitive questions, it definitely benefits you to prepare properly so you can go in with your enhanced knowledge, skills, and abilities to be able to tackle that part one and get as many correct as possible. Now each one of these components of the test, the first part being the cognitive component and dealing with those types of questions, they're weighted in value. For instance, the first part of the test may not be weighted as heavily as the second part of the test and then the third part of the test could even be weighted heavily as well over the, the prior two parts. It's different within each testing jurisdiction because they determine through a job task analysis what scales, what parts of the test are most important for that jurisdiction, but the test will always be the same. The instrument itself will be, always be the same. How much each thing's count could differ from one part of the country to another or one jurisdiction to another but the test will remain the same and those cognitive components will be in part one. When you move on to part two with this two and a half hour exam, now you'll face 114 statements. These are unique type statements. This is a different instrument than is offered anywhere else in the country. These aren't necessarily trade assessment statements. They're not personality statements that you agree or disagree with per se. Even though most of the law enforcement exams that are used prominently throughout the country have a trade assessment section, this particular exam has more, what is more uh, termed an integrity test. 
It is a special type of instrument that differs from every other test out there. To a degree, it is extremely unfair to the candidate without any prior orientation or training related to the test. If the company wanted to be above board and wanted to actually get the best candidates possible, it would make the most sense that they would produce some type of instructional or introductory video for candidates rather than just simply having them sit down and be subjected to 114 statements that are going to be interpreted in some of the oddest ways possible. So for instance, if you were to get a statement like, I believe, now remember this is a law enforcement examination for police testing purposes. I believe that if a person commits a violation of law, they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now you read a statement like that and you say, well, wouldn't a police officer have to? Wouldn't a police candidate have to hold that belief that severe punishment, if it's prescribed by law, is appropriate for violations of law? And then in fact, on the back end, that statement could literally be interpreted as, if you strongly agree with it, could be interpreted, and I say could, be interpreted as you are prone to violence and likely to have trouble on the job requiring investigation, discipline, and possible termination if you consistently answer in a particular way. So you can go in and you could easily outsmart yourself on these statements. You could go in and you could easily be so loose and lax with these statements that you likewise just as going too far don't go far enough with them and end up with a substandard score. Either fail because 50, well actually 40 to 60 percent of the candidates that sit for this particular exam actually fail it. And then of those that pass the exam, most jurisdictions, 98 percent of the jurisdictions around the country, passing is not good enough. You have to achieve a high score. So of that portion, that 60 to 40 percent that actually pass the test and get a passing score, the vast majority, 80 percent of those candidates are eliminated, eliminated by virtue of the fact that their score is too low for them to continue in the process. So it's an extremely competitive exam. It's recognized that between one in five and one in seven candidates who sit for this exam, that if they were truly evaluated independent of the test, they would be deemed perfect, absolutely perfect candidates. One in five to one in seven of those candidates will actually fail this exam and have difficulty with it. So it's a controversial test. It does uh, produce good candidates generally overall but it also eliminates a lot of really good candidates that never get a chance to move on in a process and thereby lose their opportunity for the career they desire. So make sure if you're taking this type of test, you reach out to me, take advantage of the test preparation services available through CCS Test Prep. It is a challenging test that has the 80 cognitive questions, 114 integrity slash trait assessment statements, and then the final section, which is tied into part two, but, but distinguished as biodata, there are six very basic questions that you have to answer about yourself, multiple choice biodata type questions, uh, not overly challenging, not difficult, not much needs to be said about those. So take advantage of test preparation. If you're entering a competitive environment, even the companies that write these tests recognize that it's important to practice, train, study, and prepare yourself for the exam. That shows a degree of conscientiousness, a degree of intrinsic or internal motivation that is most suitable for the job and most consistent with a person who's willing to go into a police academy, train, and do well. So never hesitate to engage in test preparation. Just make sure you do the proper preparation through CCS Test Prep. Okay, info at ccstest.com is my email, www.ccstest.com is my website. There's a tremendous amount of information on the website and take advantage of the other videos on this channel. Thank you.